So, episode two of Shadow Generations Dark Beginnings just came out earlier today at around 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is a lot earlier than episode one came out, and I have a sneaking suspicion as to why that could be. I think that they messed up during the Sonic Central, and they meant to write that it was coming out on the 26th and not the 25th, but since they had already put the 25th, they had to scramble to, like, put all the metadata and the description stuff, like, on the videos and get out of social media and stuff, uh, because people were like, where's episode one? And so they were like, oh no, we put Put down the 25th and not the 26th. Uh, the only reason I think that is because the next episode is coming out next week, which is the 10th, um, which is also a Thursday, and the one last week came out on a Wednesday, right after the Sonic Central. Um, so I, I just don't think that that was correct. I think it meant to come out on the 26th, but it's okay. They got it on time. Um, and we're going to dive right into the second episode, which is called Finding the Way. Uh, now, before you watch my reaction analysis, all that, be sure to watch the original first on their social media platforms, whether that's on Twitter, here on YouTube, what, whatever. Uh, please support the original release, all the artists that worked hard on this, and all the people who work uh, with on these animations and with these uh, social media uh, management teams and the promotional teams, they deserve the, you know, to, to reap the benefits of, of their hard work and not just to have you watch <laughs> this for the first time through me. So please go support the official release and let's get right into it. The moon is complete! <laughs> okay, <laughs> the space colony arc 50 years ago. <gasps> Tell that freak to stay away from me! The gun commander! Whoa, 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 Oh, God, I, I paused it. My bad. Abe! So they're confirming that his name is Abraham Towers. That's from the comics, I think. Yeah. What? What? I didn't mean to pause it, sorry. <laughs> that was just a huge... Shadow? What is this? What are you looking... Are you all right? Maria, I'm fine. What is... It's just... Is that the... Artificial chaos head? The professor created me using alien oh. DNA. Wait, so you knew this? The black arms, he called them. You knew this? What? The same DNA is this larva, this ugly, heartless creature. That that I changes a lot. Like a hedgehog, but I'm really no different than this thing. That's not true. You have a big heart. It may be difficult for you to express it, but I know that deep down, you really do care. About me. About everyone. He's what so you mad do is for what no reason. You. I know you're having a hard time finding answers, but I'm certain you will one day. I wonder if Shadow Generations is going to shed light then, on. You'll find even more people you can trust. Here it is, hidden base. I, I called it pyr pyramid base in like the Sonic Central or something. No, it's it's hidden base and pyramid cave. <laughs> so these are the samurai, the, the, the egg pond samurai from Sonic Colors. But why are they here? My boy, ah, Rouge. So they, okay, they all met up here. What are you doing here? Just gathering some intel for gun. Oh my god, these actions. What's your story? Ah, this action is so good. To reach the arc. I have reason to believe the black arms have returned. Well, you're out of luck here. This is just a supply depot. Okay. For what? Okay, so the egg breaker is Eggman piloting the egg breaker. I call dibs. <laughs> Take it out. Or oh, is this like an autonomous version of the egg breaker? That's kind of cool. That's a cool idea. Good God, dude, this is so good. Okay! Oh, yes! Yes! I have been vindicated, dear God! <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, the theory was, or a lot of people had this while, and I don't know, I, I understand why it is, but people had this idea that because the these episodes are saying present day at the beginning, 
that that means that this that the shadow in shadow generations is the shadow f- post sonic frontiers and to me i'm like that i get where you're coming from with that but i feel like that wouldn't make sense cuz silver right silver is a prime example of this silver was brought in from the future potentially i guess into white space but it doesn't exactly make sense for him to grab a future version of shadow and bring him to white space but not the present day shadow cuz that that would mean that at the end of generations there is now two shadows one who is out somewhere in the world and then the one post frontiers because rem- remember the shadow shows up at the end of sonic generations and then he's at the birthday party at the end of gens so i don't know why people think or why it may like i again i kind of understand why they think that but l- it, i just logistically it doesn't make sense so the the shadow from front sorry the shadow from generations is the shadow from generations <laughs> you know what i mean the shadow that will be playing in his own campaign is the shadow from his time frame not n- not like a future version of shadow it's not that it wouldn't make sense it's just that it's it's easier for it to be this way than any other way i think that this is a better explanation and use of shadow's time than to be like oh because people are like, oh, how else is he in in Sunset Heights or in Chaos Island? He's never, like, whatever, right? But it's just like, okay, time isn't just past and present. Pa- time is also future. And I get it. Oh, well, why didn't Sonic go to any future levels? Because they hadn't been made yet. In, in this timeline, in our current real-world timeline, forces and frontiers have happened as mainline games. Lost World has as well. Granted, Lost World has as well, and I don't know, they might, I could see them doing this as a sort of DLC, like a level where Sonic goes to the Lost Hex. I doubt that they'll do that. I, it's kind of weird that they haven't shown Shadow going to the Lost Hex, but I'm guessing they're not connecting the Lost Hex to anything else. But, I mean, Lost World wasn't a thing when Generations came out or when Generations was being made. It was right off the heels of Colors. So I don't know why people are like, oh, well, they didn't put him in any future games in in the original Generations. Anyway, sorry, rant over. It just feels good to have that confirmation. (laughs) I'll take that as a yes. Now then, interested in raiding a gun base? What? Oh, come on! (laughs) I was right at the end. Dude, ah, ah, I don't know how I feel. Cause like that was so short. It felt like so, this was my problem with stuff like Divergence divergence and Convergence in Sonic, Gen- Sonic 4, uh, blah, 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 blah. Sonic Frontiers. Sorry, this was exactly how I felt about Divergence and Convergence in Sonic Frontiers. They are very, very short pieces of transmedia supplemental material where they're so short that it's just like, why wasn't this just part of the game, right? Really, what happens here? Shadow shows up to Hidden Base, I'm assuming Hidden Base, fights a couple Egg Pods, fights an Egg Breaker, meets up with Rouge and Omega, and then the the birthday party is name-dropped. At the beginning, we learn the gun commander's name. This episode almost feels a little bit more frustrating just be- than, the, than the first episode because I feel like there was more going on in the first episode compared to this one. Here, again, it's just like not a whole lot happened, right? There are a couple things that we learn. I'm not going to say that there's nothing that we learn. We do learn a couple of things. We learn the gun commander's name, which is Abe, which we can assume to, to mean Abraham Towers, which was his name in the Archie comics, I believe. Next thing that we have confirmed is that Shadow knew about the Black Arms relatively. He knew about the Black Arms before the event, uh, the events of Adventure Two. So when he was on the Ark, which is weird because like he doesn't th- that is uh, slightly retconish because like they are never mentioned once. None of this is ever mentioned once in Adventure Two, right? And you cannot blame that on Amnesia. Shadow knew about these things. He remembered Maria. He remembered the professor. And I guess it wasn't relevant. Maybe it just, it never came out because it wasn't relevant. But it is kind of weird to know that he knew about this. It almost feels like it made more sense if he didn't know about this. If this was something that that the professor sort of hid from him. Um, Especially because in Shadow the Hedgehog at the end, 
Professor Gerald sort of goes into exposition mode and tells him like, hey, I made a deal with some aliens and like this happened. Like these are things that Shadow would already know. So why would Gerald need to repeat it? Although I guess he doesn't, he doesn't speak of it as if he were talking about it for the first time. So maybe that's how they get around that. And I'm not saying that this is a bad thing necessarily. It's just kind of weird that A, Shadow knew about this 50 years ago and it didn't really ever come up until Shadow the Hedgehog. And B, that like, Professor Gerald still had, you know, like a black arms larva or something in his, on the Ark, right? That, I mean, did, did Gunn seize this too? Is there still something like this? Is this larvae, is this larva, Doom's Eye? Did Gunn seize did Gunn seize this larva and this is how Doom's eye still exists? Could that... No. No, there's no way, right? Maybe there's more to this than I thought. <laughs> you know, we, we got more Maria and Shadow stuff. Um, I don't think... I feel like there's not a whole lot that this adds to their dynamic, unfortunately. I feel like this is just more of... Stuff we already knew between them. Like, they're very good friends. And Maria sees the best in Shadow, where Shadow doesn't really see the good in himself. He sees himself as a monster. And I think that him... Us getting to to sort of hear about what he thinks about himself through his identity as a Black Arms is interesting, right? Like, he's, he sees himself as a monster because of his connection to the Black Arms. And maybe his demeanor is like that because of the black arms, but Maria definitely sees through that more, right? And and she mentioned something else that is also kind of from Sonic Battle, which is that he has a heart. Something that both Emerald and Shadow had that, that Gerald put into them was a heart. It was a soul. And so I think Maria really fostered that within Shadow. But again, that's kind of something we already knew. That's not anything necessarily new. Again, here we see Abe just... Dude has some issues, dude. Like, honestly, this frame right here of him looking mad, they really captured, like, what the commander looks like as a kid, right? Like, they really... Or, sorry. I mean, that is kind of what I mean. They, they really captured his demeanor as an adult in this frame of him as a child. I think they did really, really well in, in how they designed him. They, they already had the sort of framework from Shadow the Hedgehog, but, like, to translate that to this new model and to, like, the, the, the facial expressions he makes are, are very good. I knew that they were going to segue, like, especially considering the last episode where Shadow's like, I don't even know where I fit in on, on, I don't know where I would fit in on Earth. I knew that they were going to sort of segue into, like, oh, there's Team Dark, right? And Maria says here, you'll find even more people you can trust. Which, you know, obviously we, we meet uh, Shad uh, Rouge and Omega at... Uh, Eggman's hidden base, which still exists. And honestly, this was something that I wanted to talk about while this was happening too. I think it's really intelligent of Shadow because he, he if uh, of anybody, I mean, given the, advent the events of Adventure 2, it makes sense that he would know that on hidden base at, at Eggman's, let's just call it pyramid base because it's not really hidden to them, but like at, at his pyramid base from Adventure 2, you know, it makes sense that he would go there searching for a rocket, right? Although, I don't, like, why didn't he just go to Tails? <laughs> I mean, what was Tails going to say? Like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm not going to let you use a rocket. Why would I do that? No, uh, but but it, it kind of makes sense. Because, like, he probably doesn't want to ask anybody for help. It's just like, okay, Eggman probably has a rocket somewhere around here. I'm just going to go look for a rocket. Um, <laughs> so he goes there, finds Rouge and Omega... Uh, fights all these egg pawns off, which amazing, by the way. But I, I do wonder if there's significance to this because why would a, why would there be egg pawns here? B, why would I mean, is is maybe there's no reason they have to be the samurai ones? Maybe it's just because they were the ones that looked the coolest in terms of fighting. But I wonder if maybe there's something more there. There probably isn't. But I do wonder why there are still robots protecting this base. That, that is kind of interesting. Raise me inferior models. So, so I believe that's Roger as Omega, and I think he's doing a way better job here than he did in, in the Tails tube. And I, <laughs> I do think that it's very funny that this is a coincidence, by the way. Like, they don't come here together. This is completely like, oh, 
huh? <laughs> what are you guys doing here? <laughs> Gathering some intel for gun. Why would Rouge need to gather intel for gun during the events of Sonic Generations at an Eggman base? I, I again, I maybe I'm reading too far into this, but I feel like there's something there. I feel like I don't want to tie it into Frontiers again, but I just I get that feeling that there's something there, right? And maybe not. Maybe it's more related to something before him. Maybe I doubt something related to Lost World, but maybe something Force is related. I don't know. But th there's a reason Rouge is here gathering intel for Gun at an Eggman base. I have reason to believe the Black Arms have returned. Well, you're out of luck here. <laughs> there, there's something so funny about Rouge just being like, "Oh, all right," <laughs> you know, like, "Oh, the Black Arms have returned." Okay, uh, yeah, sorry, there's nothing here. Like, there, she doesn't, pardon the pun, she doesn't bat an eye at that information. Like, she's not like, what? They've, they've, they 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 probably came back? What do you mean? She's just like, oh, sorry, I mean, there's nothing here. <laughs> Dude, the action is so good. I do, okay, and, and thinking about it a little bit more, now, I almost feel like the Egg Breaker and Egg Pond Samurais don't mean anything. Like, it's they're probably just there to recite. Like, it, it, this is going to sound bad, and I don't necessarily mean it in a bad way, more so in, like, a, I kind of get it. They probably just reused those designs for the sake of reusing them. There, there, wasn't, there probably wasn't a point to doing it other than like, hey, we remember these, we thought it would be really cool to use these instead of creating new designs that they're just gonna use for a one-off episode. I feel like we would almost be more upset if they were like, oh, look at this cool robot design that you're never gonna get to fight that we only created for this one thing. Instead, here's like recycled designs that you know, you're not gonna be like, oh, why don't we ever get to fight those things? Um, but then they do make us like sort of question like, oh, well, why those, right? <laughs> like, I think that that's, the, that's sort of the, the duality of that. Um, I don't think that there's a reason for it now. Because uh, I'm thinking about the Egg Breakers. Like, why would they bring the Egg Breaker back? Like, to, just to reference Shadow? Maybe. Maybe it is just to reference Shadow. And through that lens, yeah, that's probably all it was. It was probably just a reference to Shadow. Now then, interested in raiding a gun base? So, the way that Shadow... Th that's something else, too, though. This doesn't make any sense. Hold on, hold on. The more I think about it, this doesn't make any sense. Because in Adventure 2, and granted, it didn't make sense in Shadow the Hedgehog either, now that I think about it, how did Shadow get onto the Ark in Adventure 2? Right? Because remember at the beginning, when, when Eggman releases him, he's like... Meet me aboard the Space Colony Ark. There's this... I have something to show you there. Since you were so kind as to release me, my master, I will grant you one wish. Bring the Chaos Emeralds to the Space Colony Ark. I'll be there waiting for you. And there he is! What did he use then? <laughs> if, if I'm... Because doesn't the Ark have a teleporter, right? That's how Rouge gets there, right? I'm pretty sure that's how Eggman gets there at some point, too. So they don't need a spaceship to get to the Ark. Don't they have teleporters to get there? Maybe may, I mean, maybe there's, like, a, a, a reason for that to be, but I feel like this is unnecessary. They don't need a spaceship to do this. There are teleporters. In fact, I'm just now wondering, I don't know if I asked this before, but how did the Chaotix get to the Ark in, in Shadow? <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't understand, like, the more I think about it, this plot point is kind of, because I was going to say originally, couldn't Shadow just go to Gun and be like, hey, I need to go to the Ark, like, I think he has enough street cred after the events of Shadow to be like, hey, I have reason to believe the Black Arms may return, could I please go to the Ark? Because I think there may be something there. You know I'm on your side. <laughs> please let me do this. I, I don't know. It could, it could all just go back to, you know, he doesn't want to ask anyone for any favors. But it's just, logically, I feel like there are easier ways to do this. And I think that they're going about this in a pretty roundabout way. <laughs> you know what I mean?
Oh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this episode. This episode, like, realistically, this episode isn't even four minutes long. This is way shorter than the first episode. Um, and so for them to raid a gun base, I kind of get what they're going for. They're going for, they're not, their allegiance doesn't lie with gun. They may work with gun, but they don't work for for gun, if that makes sense, right? Like they will they will work for gun at their convenience or work with gun at their convenience, but they are not loyal to the guardian units of nations. Which is interesting. That's a very interesting way of presenting this, but I again, because of the logic behind it, I feel like there could have been a better way to do it. Um I've seen some people talk about uh Kathleen, I forget her last name, the the, the voice actor who plays Rouge. I've seen people talk about how much they like her performance in this. I really like it too, especially af off the heels of Dream Team, where I don't know why they gave her the voice direction that they that they did. She had played Rouge just fine up until then. That one was just very, very strange. And then here, she sounds great. I think Roger sounds great as Omega, the two lines they gave him. Um, my one complaint about Kirk in this episode is that, like, he is still a little too soft-spoken at times, right? Like, parts where I feel like he could perhaps be a little angrier and perhaps speak a little louder like he still sort of just talks in a very you know calm tone rouge what are you doing here right like even though there's stuff exploding all around them but no overall the performances are great animation is still great the action sequences are fantastic it's just i i, I again i don't feel like as much happened in this compared to the last episode, and I don't just mean that in the sense of the runtime. I think that this was this was all leading up to something we already knew was going to happen, and I think that that's what makes me feel like not a whole lot happened because it's just like okay, but we knew this was going to happen. We don't really learn that much in this episode, and so like it makes me more excited for episode three to see where they're going to go with that, but at the same time, I'm also more cautious, because it's like, what if we get to episode three, and it's a, it's more things that we already kind of knew, and or, or just more things that we could already have deduced, given the information we have, which again was a huge problem I had with the uh, divergence and convergence uh, prologues for Frontiers. Yeah, I, I don't know. There's not a whole lot for me to dissect with this one because of the runtime and because there's, like, again, half of it was a fight scene, half of it was just, you know, Maria and Shadow talking. Um, there were little bits of information that we learn that aren't... Some which are pretty big reveals. Like, oh, I can't believe the biggest thing for me in this one was learning the commander's name. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that should not have been the thing that got me most excited about this. <laughs> Even learning that Shadow knew about the Black Arms beforehand, I'm just like, okay, that's kind of weird. <laughs> but yeah, I think we'll have to wait until uh, next week's episode to, to be more definitive about that. And then after that, just play the game because the game's going to be out like a week and a half after that. So... Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I'm sorry there wasn't a whole lot more to talk about with this. Um, I just don't feel like there is a whole lot to discuss with it. I guess I should have done this too. Um, I need to watch the Japanese version. <laughs> just to make sure that there's uh, nothing that differs from the English version. Abe! <laughs> This is what I was talking about with their identity. Also, I saw someone mention, just because I, I don't think I'm going to get the opportunity to talk about this again. I talked about how much the commander as a child looks like the original commander from Shadow the Hedgehog as an adult. Um, someone pointed out, and, and I didn't, I think that this is why he looks so weird to me. He is not a model. He is actually hand-drawn in this compared to the other characters. Like, Maria is a 3D model, Shadow's a 3D model. The other characters are 3D models, but the commander is not. The, the, the child commander, Abraham, is, uh, he's hand-drawn. So that's why he looks so different from Maria and from Shadow. <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that mean? If that's the case, I won't be tweeting. <laughs> what is that like an expression to mean like I won't be, you know, I won't be sitting idly by or something? I 
also didn't talk about this because I wasn't really thinking about it. I was just enthralled by the visuals. The way that they take down the egg breaker, uh, the way that they take down the egg breaker is incredible. Like they they take it down as a team. Like they they know each other so well. They don't even need to coordinate. I think that that really speaks to how well they work together as a team. They don't even need to coordinate. It's just like, hey, let's do this, and then they all just know what each other's gonna do, or like they all act off of each other. That's also really really good storytelling for their relationship as characters. <laughs> What? <laughs> what? Okay, I saw... Okay, so the reason I even remembered to check the Japanese version was because I saw someone post that the Japanese subtitles said something suggestive. <laughs> and I was like, mm, I don't doubt that this happened, but I would need to see this for myself. Rest, yup, that is what it says. <laughs> Let's go to Gun's base. <laughs> Tabs. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know if I should say that. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I'll include that. But if you're curious, and I don't know if they're gonna change this at all, probably because this is this is like Google's own translate like thing from Japanese. Go to the Japanese version of this episode and check out what Rouge says at the end. Set the language to Japanese and then tra auto translate it to English. I don't even know what this could be. I wonder if the word to raid is is what's causing conflict there. Because I, I, otherwise I have no idea what is, why it would translate it to that. <laughs> yeah, again, I just, I don't hate it. It's just, I think that there were certain logical points or common sense points that they kind of didn't hit or maybe didn't think about <laughs> that kind of just overcomplicate this plan. <laughs> um, but otherwise, it's fine. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not like episode one in any way. Again, the best thing was the action sequences that those continue to be fantastic. I can't, I would love to see the studio work on more uh, Sonic animations in as far as action sequences go, or even if like they could pitch in to work on like animations for the games. That would be chef's kiss. <laughs> All right. I will see you guys next time for episode three. Um, until then, stay safe, stay awesome. This is Jari5, signing off.